huge ship which carries the steel from the World Trade Center and which the skilled hands of this shipyard will craft will serve as a tribute to all who suffered and to the brave men and women who came to their aid. The ship has seven and a half tons of steel taken from the World Trade Center and it was forged into the bow stem of LPD-21. In 42 years, I probably worked on maybe 100 ships or more. I began as a crane operator, then I went into rigging, and then I became a crane superintendent. On LPD-21, which would be the New York, uh, my responsibilities were coordinating and arranging the heavy lifting. I could have retired, but I wanted to work on that ship because I wanted it to be my last ship. I considered it an extra, an extra honor to work on that ship. Uh, my name is Miguel Valderas. I uh, currently uh, work as a zone foreman on LPD-21. My responsibility is uh, to complete compartments uh, in zones five and six. The, the value of the ship to our country uh, you can't measure, um, I guess from the patriotic sense, uh, the USS New York to me meant a lot. I spent time with my crew, my team, sharing what I felt in my heart, uh, the importance of that being, you know, that we're literally, in my opinion, building history. That's going to live you five inches. Uh, my name is Dennis McCranmer. I'm currently working on LPD-21 outside machinist supervisor. Day-to-day -day operations involve lining up a crew and getting them in place, securing hot work permits to make sure that no one is hurt while performing these tasks. LPD-21 has brought a special significance to myself as well as many other shipbuilders, not just because of what it means, but it's, it's a tribute to the people of New York who lost their lives in this tragedy. I recently had the honor of going to New York to meet with the families of the September 11th Association where they've set up a tribute center, a museum where they have artifacts, film footage, memorabilia. When we visited the tribute gallery, we saw a tremendous amount of pictures of people that were once there, happy, smiling, and now they're gone. We saw the debris from the um, building once it collapsed, and I work around still every day. To see it twisted up as it is, it's, it's unbelievable that something like that can happen. They had a piece of a plane there that was all fractured when they flew into the building, and it, it was a porthole where obviously you would look down and look through and see the Grand Canyon if you were flying a plane under a normal day. September 11th, beautiful day. Crystal clear, you could see for a thousand miles. Not a cloud in the sky. The first plane came from the north. It came very low. It was very, very loud. It hit the north tower at around the 92nd floor. My son, in my case, uh, called me uh, at home because his firehouse was in Queens, and he had said, uh, you know, the phone rang, he said, Dad, turn your TV on. I turned the TV on, and it was the, the view all of us saw. He said, the North Tower was hit by a plane. I said, oh. I said, are you going to be going, John? And he said, we should be. I called. And the next thing I could hear in the background was a tone alert, which means they're going on a run. So uh, he said, Dad, we're going to the World Trade Center. I said, John, be careful. He said, okay, and that was the last time I spoke to my son. So my mission that day was to come into the city. I had the pleasure of meeting a gentleman whose son was a firefighter who uh, was a hero, and he was a victim. He sacrificed his life saving people he never knew. And his father donated his son's firefighting gear to be displayed so that folks like myself can come here and see firsthand 
this incredible sacrifice. I had a guide who took me on this tour who has uh, a husband that worked in the World Trade Center. Uh, she was on the 67th floor. He was on the 71st floor. He had three children at home. I did something that morning I've never done in my entire life. I love coffee and I always stop and get coffee. They had a great coffee bar in the lobby of the World Trade Center. I did not stop for coffee that morning. That probably saved my life because one of my colleagues who worked on the same floor that I worked on, who was right behind me, died in the Trade Center because he was stuck in an elevator. On that day, when the plane hit the building, it was a snap in one direction and then a snap back. It was a tremendously loud sound. A I woman who there. had an office right below the impact point, who cleared out some 230 people, I believe it was, got them down off of that floor. At about the 25th floor, people started to say, move over, form one line. And at that point, that's when you saw your first fireman on the 26th floor. So in the back of your mind had been this lingering doubt that you were gonna make it out of the building. When you saw a fireman, you knew if they could get up, you could get out. There was wreckage all over, all over the plaza, strewn all over. There were fires burning everywhere and there were human remains scattered everywhere that you could see. You wanted to go out despite what you saw. That was your exit out of the building. So you wanted to go out there. And there were people saying, no, you can't go out this way. And as you stood there, people were jumping and landing in front of you on the plaza. So they sent us down a set of escalators through the lobby. And through the lobby, you're stepping through revolving doors instead of going through them because all the glass is blown out. I started to feel a rumble in my feet the ground started to shake and I looked toward where the trade centers were and I started to see a cloud, a gray cloud that started to get bigger and bigger. So I thought the building was falling on top of me. We tried doors, we couldn't get into any of the doors and so we did the next best thing which is basically um, there were three of us. We um, turned our backs, we closed our eyes and we held hands. The dads came to here every day in the morning. This is a little group of us. We became known as the Band of Dads. There's about eight of us. Anybody we would find along the way was a godsend because that family would have something to be happy about. They'll have their loved one or something of their loved one at home. On December 11th, I had left the site. I was home by about 9.30. Uh, about 11.30, the phone rang, and it was a chief in charge of this site for the night. So he said, Lee, we have John. I said, OK. I'll be right in. So I uh, got my son Brendan and myself and we came in. Men were lining up on the hill already. And off on the side as we went down near the bottom was a um, Stokes basket. It's like a stretcher that you can carry, it has sides to it. And there was a, um, a flag over it. I went down the ramp and uh, Paul, the chief, came up to me and he put his hands on my shoulders and said, um, Lee, he's all there. Now that's very important. That's very important. So I said, thank you, Paul. I went over to the basket and I did what I had to do to my son, Jonathan. Then Brendan came over and did what he had to do to his brother. And then uh, in the tradition of the New York City, in the tradition of all firemen, all fire departments, we carry out our own. So my son Brendan and myself and men from uh, Squad 288 picked up Jonathan and we were able to carry Jonathan out and bring him home and put him to bed where he belongs. These young men and women didn't become heroes because of September 11th. Uh, they didn't become heroes because of their sacrifice. That they were actually always heroes and they'll be remembered because when everyone else was running away, they ran in. The poster next to it are the photos of the 343 guys that died from the New York City Fire Department. So if we look at this memorial, come on, we'll go this You way. have to be here and talk to the people to understand how large this loss really was, how important this ship is. It's time to get this ship done.
get it in the hands of the Navy. The New Yorkers deserve to walk on the decks of this ship. testament to what the shipyard workers here have done to get this ship to this point and the promise of things to come. All stationalized team 139, the ship is coming down. Get your teams deployed. I think it's a wonderful tribute to the people who were killed and it's a way that their spirits and their memory can continue to move forward and also a beautiful tribute to the survivors. Um, those of us that every day live with the memories of September 11th and the tragedy, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way and a beautiful way to have part of those buildings move forward in a very constructive and productive way for our country. And I hope and pray that all of those Navy men and women and military personnel on board those ships um, are safe and I, I think she'll carry them in a really brave manner. And they'll always have in their hearts what they're doing for our country. Attention all teams, the ship is now flowing. Do a final search and muster on a 